as it was for differentiation, um, integration works in very much the same way as it did before when we're dealing with fractional and negative indices. So, if you have the integral of x to the n uh, dx, then when integrating, we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And then we also have this constant of integration because we're working with an indefinite integral. So this is exactly the same as before. The only proviso is that n is not equal to minus 1. Because when n is equal to minus 1, you get a fraction with 0 as the denominator. So that doesn't quite work. And we'll deal with that when we get on to uh, call 3 and using logarithms in order to do it. So this works for whatever power of n ex as long as n is not minus 1. So for example, if you had to integrate 1 over x squared dx, then first of all, write it as a power of x, so that's the integral of x to the minus 2 dx. I add 1 to the power, I divide by the new power, and remember that constant of integration. So you could write that as minus x to the minus 1 plus c. Likewise, if I had to integrate the third root of x dx, then first of all write it as a power of x, so that's x to the one third. Add one to the power, so one third plus one is four thirds, and divide by the new power. So if you're dividing by four thirds, that's the same as multiplying by three quarters. So that's three quarters x to the four thirds plus your constant c. Okay, and so you can see that integration works in much the same way as it did with whole numbers, whole positive numbers. It's just that now we've got to deal with fractions and negative indices thrown into the mix.